Hello children, hope you are all doing well. In today's English class, we are going to look at unit number 7. The title of the lesson is Child Labour. It's found on page number 25 in your Learning Ladders textbook. As I go through this lesson, I want you to open your textbook and look at this page, page number 25. Did you notice that this particular lesson is not looking like the rest of the lessons that we've learned so far? It's looking like a comic book, isn't it? Yes, a story can be presented in different ways and this is one of the ways to present a story. Let's look at it. Raju is a poor orphan boy from a slum. He works at a tea stall. One morning while sweeping the pavement near the tea stall. I wish I could also go to school. If you look at that dialogue box, it looks like bubbles. That's when the boy is thinking to himself. So he is an orphan boy called Raju. Who is an orphan? An orphan is a person who has lost both his parents. So he doesn't have parents and he is from a slum. A slum is a place where a lot of poor people are sickly populated. A lot of people live in their small huts and makeshift homes in a very small area. So that is called a slum. This small boy called Raju is from the slum. He works at a tea stall. So he is working at a tea stall. Such a small boy and he is working. One morning while sweeping the pavement, pavement is a footpath near the tea stall, he is thinking to himself, I wish I could also go to school. So as you can see in the picture, there are some kids going to school and when Raju saw them, he is thinking to himself that he should also be going to school. On the next page we see the employer, the owner of the tea stall scolding him saying, Raju, do your work fast. Yes, Dada, wash the glasses after that. The customer is not going to wait. So he seems like a very strict person. And Raju has to get back to work now. He cannot just stand outside cleaning the pavement and looking at the kids and thinking about how his life could have been different. So what happens after that? Three young professionals come to the stall. Among them is Arvind. Three young people who are working somewhere, they walk into the tea stall to drink some tea. As you can see in the picture, they are well dressed and looks like they are well to do also. The tea stall owner welcomes them very warmly to the tea stall. Welcome by Triumvirate, by Trimurti. Triumvirate is a set of three people who used to rule in ancient Rome. It means trinity or three people who are friends or who are always together. The Hindi word for that is Trimurti. It seems like they are good friends, they know each other and this is how the tea stall owner is addressing these three friends. Good morning Babaida. Two cups of tea for my friends here. What? No tea for Arvind Babu yet again? That is what the owner is asking. Yes Arvinda, you never have anything from us. Who is saying that? Raju is saying that. Raju is saying, why don't you also have some tea? You never have anything from us. And then the tea stall owner starts shouting at Raju. Do your work. Don't you stand here chit-chatting. Chit-chatting means to engage in some silly conversation. Can't you be polite? He's just a kid. Who is saying that? Arvind is saying that. Arvind Babu, these little pricks do not work. They just waste time. So the owner is now defending himself, saying, I'm not rude. I am just scolding him because he's not doing any work. And these good for nothing people, they never do any work. So they deserve some scolding. Why should they? It's not the age for work. So when the owner said that Raju is not working and that's why he's scolding him, Arvind asks him, why should he work? Because this is the age to go to school. Raju should go to school at his age. Arvinda, let it go or he'll sack me from the job. This is what Raju is saying now. Arvinda, just leave it because this man will just let me go from the job. I will lose my job so I don't want to get into any kind of trouble. So just let it go. And then the owner is getting very angry. He says, 
that these people cannot even afford food so how can they afford books so there is no way Raja can go to school so he is becoming very arrogant and he speaks like that and that makes Arvind very angry that's why you take advantage and exploit them exploit means to use them for one's own benefit what is Arvind saying now just because this boy is an orphan he doesn't have anybody to depend on and he doesn't have any money to get food he wouldn't be in a position to even go to school so that is why you're taking advantage of this little boy and that gets the tea stall owner very very angry he is furious Arvind Babu you are crossing your limit if you don't like it don't come here anymore so he's like don't ever come back here if you don't like what I'm doing and he says I won't and neither will Raju Wow now he's taking Raju along with him you don't worry Raju this is what Arvind is saying to Raju I'm going to take the responsibility for providing for your education you can come and stay with my family my mother would love to have another son what a kind-hearted young man he speaks up for Raju who could not defend himself and now he says I will take you home and my mother will also be happy to have you and we will take care of you he promises a good future for Raju saying I will take care of your education as well so what did you learn from this story do you know that kids are not supposed to work and yet there are so many kids in this country and in this world who are forced to work that is called child labor in our Indian Constitution article 24 states that any child who is under the age of 14 years should not be given any kind of work in a factory or in any dangerous place of work it is a punishable offense child labor is a direct violation of a fundamental right of a child to enjoy his childhood and to have education if it is a punishable offense or a crime why would people still do it that's because it's easy to just employ vulnerable or weak children like orphans and pay them much lesser than they would pay adults child labor is still rampant or widespread in our country in different ways children are employed in areas that they shouldn't be employed that is why we have to raise our voice against all of this when we encounter them just like Arvind let's look at the word meanings orphan we already know that a child with no parents slum a crowded poor locality where people live in makeshift houses makeshift meaning temporary houses pavement is footpath triumvirate in ancient Rome a group of three people who held power to rule it basically just means three people exploit take advantage of someone in order to benefit oneself let's look at learn words make sentences of your own using the following words a set of words are given you may not know all of them so you can use a dictionary to look up the meaning and then start using these words in your own sentences let's look at one of them abash abash means to be embarrassed let's use that in a sentence Ravi looked abashed when he was caught doing some mischief in class like that there are other words as well please go through them and with the help of a dictionary find out their meanings and then use them in your own sentences the next section is write down the meaning of the following idioms and then make sentences using them what are idioms idioms are a group of words when used together will mean something unique so they may mean different things when they are used separately but together like a phrase they mean something unique for example to eat a humble pie to eat a humble pie it means to admit to one's mistake and behave apologetically a sample sentence is also given there Amesh had to eat a humble pie when he realized that he had behaved very rashly so to eat a humble pie is when somebody realizes they have been in the wrong and then they say sorry for it and they are embarrassed about it so in this story the tea stall owner had to eat a humble pie and admit to the fact that he was exploiting the young boy there are six idioms that are given here it would be wonderful if you can look up the meanings of each of these idioms and start using them in your own sentences that's how you improve your vocabulary let's look at the next section is called comprehension as always there are some questions that are based on the story that we just read let's look at the first one who was Raju Raju was the orphan boy who was working at the tea stall like that there are other questions as well 
If you've understood the story, it's very easy to answer all of these questions. Let's look at section E. Think and answer the following questions. In what way do you think the tea stall owner was exploiting Raju? Is for you to answer. According to you, how was the tea stall owner exploiting or taking advantage of this orphan boy called Raju? The second question is, is it right to employ children for manual labor? Give reasons to support your answer. So think about it and form your own answer. It's very important for you to think for yourself and have an opinion on all of these topics. That's why these two questions have been given there. There are no right or wrong answers. If you want more information, you can ask your teacher or even do a research on your own and then find out about these topics, especially this topic of child labor. Let's move on to the grammar section. In this chapter, we are going to look at simple present tense. Simple present tense is used to describe facts and habits, scheduled events that are going to happen in the future, in exclamatory sentences beginning with here and there, and in the narration of stories. So these are the scenarios in which simple present tense is used. Simple present tense is used when we have to state a fact. Example, the sun rises in the east. It's a fact of life. The sun rises in the east. We don't say the sun is going to rise or the sun will rise in the east or the sun was rising in the east. None of these tenses would be correct. The correct tense to use here is simple present tense, which is the sun rises in the east. The second one is the earth revolves around the sun. Another fact. So the earth revolves around the sun. That is in the simple present tense. The second scenario in which you use a simple present tense is when you have to talk about a habit. He wakes up at 6 o'clock every morning. That is a habit. He does that regularly, every day. To denote something that you do on a regular basis as a routine or a habit, you use simple present tense. She goes to the library every Saturday. So every Saturday she goes to the library. She goes to the library. The third scenario in which you use simple present tense is to denote scheduled events. Events that are scheduled in advance. Events that are going to happen in the future but already fixed upon. Let's look at it. The bus leaves at 12 tomorrow. The bus is going to leave only tomorrow but it's already fixed up. So we have to use simple present tense. The bus leaves though it is going to happen in the future it is already scheduled we can use simple present tense the match starts at 6 p.m today it's already scheduled so it is going to happen you can still use simple present tense the match starts at 6 p.m today the other scenario in which you can use simple present tense is in exclamatory sentences here comes the mighty warrior so when it is ending with an exclamatory mark it is an exclamatory sentence and when that sentence begins with a here or there you can use a simple present tense here comes the mighty warrior there goes the bell let's look at the exercise read the following sentences carefully and fill in the blanks with the simple present form of the given words number one the plane dash at 4 30 pm arrive when the subject is singular, we have to use a singular verb. Here the subject is the plane. It is singular. So the verb has to be singular. We learned about that in the last chapter. Subject verb agreement. And also here the tense is going to be simple present. What is a simple present tense of arrive? In singular. Arrives. That's right. Just add an S. The plane arrives at 4.30 p.m. Number two, Vikash dash eat a lot of vegetables. What is the subject? Vikash. It is singular. So you use the singular form of eat in the simple present tense. Just add an S to it. Eats. Vikash eats a lot of vegetables. Number three, the gravity of earth dash prevent us from floating in the air. Prevents. The gravity of earth prevents us from floating in the air. Number four, Christmas dash come in December. Christmas comes in December. Number five, 
Ria dash practice maths every day. Ria practices maths every day. That's correct. Number six, Raju dash takes a shortcut to get to school. Yes, it is Raju takes a shortcut to get to school. Number seven, the next term dash begin on Monday. The next term begins on Monday. Number eight, we will wait till she dash finish her work. We will wait till she finishes her work. Number nine, Mr. Bennett dash be one fine gentleman. The simple present form of be is is in this case because it is only one person here. It's singular. So Mr. Bennett is one fine gentleman. Number 10, when does the train dash leave? This is a tricky one. It doesn't have to be leaves. Leaves would be wrong because in the question it's already in the simple present tense. Does. When does the train leave? Since does is already there, we just have to use the verb as it is. Leave. When does the train leave? The next tense that we are going to learn about is present continuous tense. It's used for an ongoing action or an action that has been arranged to take place in the near future. Again, this can denote something that is going to happen in the future very soon or it is an action that is already taking place. It is taking place right now. The present continuous form of a verb can be formed by putting is, am, are before the ing form of the verb. So the verb will be with the ing form and then the verbs would have is, am or are, is going, are going, am going, likewise. Let's look at the examples. If it is an ongoing action, I am having my breakfast. It means I am right now having my breakfast. It is happening right now. It is an ongoing action. I am reading the adventures of Tom Sawyer. That means as I am speaking, I am reading this particular book. The adventures of Tom Sawyer. Let's look at how it would be if it is a scheduled action. Something that is scheduled that is going to happen very very soon. I am going to meet Mr. Barney tomorrow. I am going to meet Mr. Barney tomorrow. Our drama troupe is performing at the auditorium tonight. It is still not happened. It is not happening right now. It is going to happen very soon. In such cases also, we can use present continuous tense. As you may have noticed, they are all preceded by the verbs am, is or are. There is an exercise that's given that's based on this concept. Read the following sentences carefully and fill in the blanks with the present continuous form of the given verbs. Number one, Vijay dash write a letter to his friend. Vijay is writing a letter to his friend. So that is the present continuous tense of the verb write. Is writing. Why is it is? Because Vijay is singular. Number two, they dash follow the wrong path. What is the present continuous tense of follow? Following. It is they. They is plural. So they are following the wrong path. Number three, I dash do the right thing. I am. I am doing the right thing. Number four, the dog dash bark at the stranger. What is the present continuous tense of bark? Barking. The dog, singular. So we have to use is. The dog is barking at the stranger. Number five, my sister dash work at a pharmaceutical company. My sister is working at a pharmaceutical company. Number six, I do not like to be disturbed when I dash. When I, when it is I, you have to use am. When I am working. Number seven, Mr. Gomez dash come for dinner tonight. Mr. Gomez is coming for dinner tonight. Number eight, we dash host a farewell party for Pushpa. We are, we are hosting a farewell party. 
The next section is learn to communicate. We have listening and speaking. That is for you to listen when the teacher reads out this paragraph and then there are questions that are based on that passage. Let's look at the writing section. Create a poster on child labor along with anti-child labor slogans. Slogans that are used against child labor, you have to put on those posters. You can draw pictures, use paper cutouts or do whatever you want to to make the poster creative. Don't forget to write the slogans. So you can make a beautiful creative poster and then write a particular slogan that resonates with you that is against child labor. All the best. Let's move on to the poem in this unit. It's called Defamation and it is written by the great Rabindranath Tagore. If you don't know much about Rabindranath Tagore, you must be reading up about him. He was the first Indian Nobel laureate, which means he was the first Indian to win a Nobel Prize. In what area did he win the Nobel Prize? For literature, for his great work, Gitanjali. Let's read this poem together. Why are those tears in your eyes, my child? How horrid of them to be always scolding you for nothing. So here's a child and people seem to be scolding this child for nothing. And he's crying. There are tears in his eyes. Horrid means horrible. How horrible that everybody seems to be scolding you all the time for nothing. You have stained your fingers and face with ink while writing. Is that why they call you dirty? Oh fie! Would they dare to call the full moon dirty because it has smashed its face with ink? Fie is an old-fashioned way of saying alas. Fie is an expression of anger or disgust. So this child has stained his fingers and face with ink while he was writing and he is getting scolded for that too. And what are they calling him? Dirty. But if you look at the full moon, sometimes we can see some marks on the moon as well. Do we call the moon dirty? No. So why would you scold a child for being a child? For every little trifle they blame you, my child, they are ready to find fault for nothing. People seem to be blaming the little children for everything that they do, for every little trifle or silly thing. You tore your clothes while playing. Is that why they call you untidy? Sometimes such things happen. When you are playing, your clothes could get torn and you get scolded and they call you untidy. Oh fie, what would they call an autumn morning that smiles through its ragged clouds? Take no heed of what they say to you, my child. So the poet is saying, don't bother about what other people are blaming you for. You're just being a child. Have fun. Enjoy your childhood. They make a long list of your misdeeds. They make a list of your mistakes and how you're not behaving well. Everybody knows how you love sweet things. Is that why they call you greedy? If you love to eat sweet things, do they call you greedy? That's not fair, the poet says. Oh fie, what then would they call us who love you? So there are people who love little children and are patient with them and are gentle with them. In Tago's opinion, it's not fair for people to keep scolding little children for being children. Wonderful. Let's look at the word meanings. Horrid means horrible, causing horror or unpleasantness. Fi means alas or it is an expression that is used to express anger or disgust. Trifle, a thing of little value or importance, something that is not at all important, something that is silly. Smudged, smeared or rubbed to destroy the original design. The ink got smudged on my shirt. Ragged, torn or in bad condition. Heed to pay attention to. Misdeeds, mistakes, morally wrong or illegal acts. Learn words. Write two rhyming words for each of the words given below. So you have to find some rhyming words for the following words. This is fun. Let's look at the first one. Child, mild, wild. Like that. You have to find the rhyming words for each of these words that are given there. Next we have the appreciation of the poem. There are some questions that are given there. We have to answer that based on what we understood out of the poem. Let's look at the grammar section now. We are going to learn about another tense. What did we already cover? Simple present tense, present continuous tense, and now we are going to learn present perfect tense. It is used for showing an event which has only recently been completed. 
present perfect makes use of has or have along with past participle of the verb. Example, we have won the competition. Have won, that is present perfect tense. As you can see, it is used with have because we is plural. We have won the competition. So we use this to denote something that is done recently, something that is over very recently. We must have just won the competition, so it's safe to say we have won the competition. Instead of saying we won the competition. She has read the book which I had given her on her birthday, which means she just about finished reading that book. She has read the book. She has because she is singular. So we have to use the singular form of the verb. She has read the book which I had given her on her birthday. Let's look at the exercise that's based on it. Read the sentences given below and fill in the blanks with the present perfect form of the given verbs. Number one, we dash do our work. What is the rule? We have to use either has or have along with the past participle of the verb. What is the past participle of the verb do? Done. It is starting with we. We is a subject. Is it singular or plural? It is plural. So we have to use have. We have done our work. Number two. Sushil Dash decided to go abroad. Sushil has, singular, has decided to go abroad. Number three, Mohan, Rakesh and Smita dash perform well in their exams. There are three people here, so it's plural, so we have to use have. So what is the past participle of the verb here? Performed. So Mohan, Rakesh and Smita have performed well in their exams. Number four, the new leader dash restored peace to the country. The new leader, singular, so it is has. The new leader has restored peace to the country. The sprinters dash wear out their shoes, that's number five. The sprinters, plural, so it's have. The sprinters have worn out their shoes. Wear is a verb and the past participle of wear is worn. The sprinters have worn out their shoes. Number six, Mario dash eat all the mangoes. Mario has eaten all the mangoes. This unit is over here. It was a wonderful unit that is based on children. First we looked at a short story that's based on child labor. It is an evil practice and we thought and wrote a lot about child labor, didn't we? Then we went on to read and understand the poem Defamation by Tagore. Defamation means to shame someone or to defame someone. That poem also talks about how people should be kind and gentle to children. We have to let children be and be patient with them and not find fault with them all the time. I hope you enjoyed this unit. There's a lot that we covered in the grammar section. I want you to go back and keep practicing and understanding all that we learned in this unit. See you later.